welcome to my mermaid sketchbook tour of 2019. As always, I absolutely love doing mermaid. I think this is my fourth year participating, which when I think about it, it's absolutely insane. For the full list of equipment I used in mermaid, just check out the description box below. Um, I'll also link to my previous mermaid sketchbook tours in case you are interested. But for now, this is a hobby craft scrapbook and this year I decided to do a prompt list. Now I've never done a prompt list for mermaid before, I normally do my own thing, but after seeing this prompt list by N. Litvin, uh, which I'll link their work down below, I just became really inspired by this. Um, I just thought I could come up with some really interesting ideas, and I think when it comes to monthly challenges, we kind of have to restrict ourselves a little bit and what i mean by this is monthly challenges are extremely daunting and not everyone has to participate you are not a failure if you did not complete mermaid i fell a few days behind a few times just because of work commitments and being ill um but it happens but by limiting your time with a monthly challenge it becomes much easier to tackle and becomes less of a chore to be able to do that challenge um, so for example, I set myself a time limit of an hour a day. I was not allowed to spend more than an hour. I sometimes went a little bit over for a few of these pieces, but overall I was really, really strict on myself. And there's some days where I could do bigger pieces and there was other days where I just couldn't. For example, I was ill for a whole week of May and I couldn't draw, I wasn't, I couldn't even get up out of bed, I was really poorly. And also I had Comic-Con to prep for, so doing Mermaid as well as Comic-Con and May is exam season for a lot of people as well and it can be a lot to take on at once. So when it comes to monthly challenges, if you are participating, set restrictions for yourself, maybe do a limited palette, maybe do them really small. By setting yourself limitations when it comes to monthly challenges, not only will you find them a lot more fun, but you'll also be able to find time to draw every single day. Now, drawing every single day is important. Um, I personally, unfortunately, don't always have time to draw every single day, but I make a con conscious effort to try and draw a little bit every single day simply because I think every time you draw you improve and you do get better. Um, I don't think that you're a bad artist if you don't draw every single day. Everyone has their limitations and as I said with the monthly challenges sometimes by setting yourself like small targets instead of big targets it is a lot easier to be able to tackle that and break it into that sort of habit. Um, for example, I don't do big pieces every single day, but I will sketch roughly, I will make sure that I'm exercising myself with my work and try and step a little bit out of my comfort zone. And whereas I didn't step massively out of my comfort zone with Mermaid, I forced myself to use materials that I have not used before. I really love working on toned paper. Um, and for the last three mermaids, I've worked on toned paper. And this is because it was setting myself an interesting limitation with what I was working on so that I could branch out and try something different. And this year I thought I would try more paint instead of like going for my usual markers. Last year I used a lot of colored pencils on the toned paper and they looked really, really nice, especially the polychromos and the prisma colors. Um, but this year I branched out and tried a lot more acrylic ink. I tried gouache, I tried um, some acrylic, I tried sticking stuff down in the paper. I was trying lots of different things so that it was becoming more interesting and fun each time. Now, Mermaid isn't for everyone, as I said, um, yet again, with it being a monthly challenge, there is a lot of pressure to draw every single day, to do a beautiful piece every single day, and I do not like half of the pieces in here. In fact, a lot of the pieces that I dislike, I was really surprised at the reception of them um, when I post them online, because for me, I can see just nothing but mistakes, and I don't like a lot of the way that they like, were flowing or anything like that. Uh, for example, this moon piece, I really like the colours. I love like how sparkly she is, but there's a lot of it that I really don't like. I hate the face. Um, 
and the sun one and the next one I really wasn't proud of this but I had to try something different and this is because I was mainly trying with a fine tech palette I wanted something very shimmery and very shiny and if I was to go back and redo these pieces I would do them in a sort of like tarot style um, and try something different but this is the good thing about these challenges you learn what works and doesn't work for you and you can really really utilize that and try something different. Mermaid is fantastic for me. I absolutely love doing Mermaid and I don't mean fantastic as in like uh, I'm great I don't know anything like that because I don't think I am. What I like about Mermaid is it encourages me to think about shapes and movement. Um, with illustrations that I personally really like to do I like to try and see if I'm capturing a moment. I always want something to be moving, something to be flowing. And what I like about Mermaid is because you have that extension of the tail, you can extend the S shapes, you can push limitations, you can make stuff look a little bit weird and don't think of like limitations of like, okay, if a knee was here, if uh, like a joint was here, think about like how fishes move in the water. And I was really having a lot of fun in making that sort of movement. Now, some of these are redos from pieces that I did the year before because I felt that they really fit the prompt description, but I really wish that I could have done like my ramen noodle mermaid again, or I could have redone my, um, one of my particular favorites where she's sat in like a rubber ring and she's got like a drink that one was one of my favorites um but I have like a lot of like favorites that I did last year um that I look back on and go I really enjoyed this but I spent a little bit more time on mermaid last year I limited myself between one to two hours whereas this year I limited myself much more because I knew this month was going to be much busier and that was okay not everything had to be perfect not everything had to be x y and z it was just about experimenting now the one thing that i really do enjoy about these monthly challenges and whether or not you yourself take part is i like seeing them all pop on my feed and like every artist participating i actually think sorry to interrupt myself here this piece is actually my favorite um because i really like the idea and the story behind it it's not executed properly but i absolutely love the mermaid in the mirror it is one of my favorite illustrations i did this month i'm not a massive fan of the girl on the outside and there's a lot of tweaking that i would do there but i was kind of doing like a twist on the little mermaid where the mermaid was forced to be human because the prince fell so deeply in love with her and she wanted to exact her revenge it's one of my favorite illustrations i've done i'd love to like expand on it in the future um be just because of the stories and with these illustrations i wanted to pop a story with each one and try and make it a little bit more interesting and I just love monthly challenge months. I think there is one this month. Um, I've seen June Bug, which is where you draw like bug creatures every single day. I think that's really, really cute. Uh, June, um, Junary, which I think is like where you draw fairies and stuff. I don't really see that many for the summer months, which I think is a real shame because the summer months are great. Um, but I reckon like if you can't do it for one month, you can. It's okay to push a challenge to another month or make it a little bit you no know, more fun for you. What would be a good challenge? Like if you could have a monthly challenge, what would you do? Um. I really like Cuvember, Inktober, I really really love Mermaid um, but it's trying to think of like limitations and how you can push yourself and go outside of your normal limitations. And I also think it, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves as artists to when these monthly challenges come out and we put ourselves down in certain aspects and you shouldn't be doing that. I mean, if a monthly challenge isn't for you or you are just simply too busy to participate, that's okay. It's not a huge deal. Um, I personally really enjoy participating in them. But if I don't have time to participate, I don't have time. Like it's not a huge deal it's okay and it's okay to miss a few days um i've saw like quite a few artists had to miss a few days because there were at conventions or people had to miss a few days because you know they were busy with life and 
that's okay. The whole challenge is to try and push yourself and do something a little bit different. Try and do something that you would not normally do. Um, And that's what I tried to think of when I was doing this. I was trying to use colours that I wouldn't normally use. I was trying to think of, okay, how can I execute this in an interesting way? And prompt lists are great, and I think this prompt list by Anne Litvin was fantastic, Um, but I felt very restricted by the prompt list. Um, I don't normally do prompt lists with monthly challenges, just because I find them very, very restricting. And I have a lot more fun when prompt lists are interesting and um or just like a lot more fun when i don't have a prompt list at all um by taking a challenge and reinventing it i really have loved seeing dina norland's um mermaid especially with the idea of mixing like different creatures with the mermaids and if i'd seen that prompt list i probably would have done this um but in all honesty this prompt list was sent to me by someone else and I just I had a vision for a lot of these illustrations in my head I've seen a few people as well where they take different prompts from different lists on different days and that's such a great idea as well therefore you're not limiting yourself to what you have to do on each day I really think I could have pushed myself more though when I look at half of these um especially where I feel like the flow is a little bit disjointed where the proportions could be better um or where I just I can see that I wasn't feeling the illustration for example this one I really don't like this one I like the concept and the idea that it's a very theatrical like um over the top mermaid but it wasn't executed the way I like it I don't like the colors or anything like that and for this one I'm not a huge fan um I was trying out Posca markers and doing something a little bit different um but it just looks sloppy and the it doesn't look right it's the shape of it it looks too flat to be honest um but it's okay to see mistakes in your work and see okay how could i have improved on that in the future like i said not every piece will be perfect that are going to be mistakes and especially if you're limiting yourself um you're not going to have time to fix every mistake and sometimes you don't see a mistake until you've finished an illustration and i think that is also important like you come to recognize what works for you and what doesn't. I think this one is also like, if I have to think about some of my favorite illustrations overall in this book, this one's one of my favorite simply because it's so simple. I was thinking of like tattoo designs and um, when the like prompt chain was coming out, I was thinking, okay, anchor, chain, and how can I incorporate that and make it interesting? And since the toned paper works really beautifully with like um, pencil crayons, I really love this like effect of the biro and the um, and the pencil crayon. It genuinely, I think personally, is one of my more favorite illustrations in here. And yet again, when I'm thinking about flow and thinking about, okay, how does the eye draw with the illustration? I think that's a really important thing um, when it comes to, I, I didn't draw a lot of backgrounds this time around simply because I was setting a limitation with it. Um, but I feel like some of these could be really enhanced and made better if I'd drawn like a really detailed background. Like, one of my favorite ones last year i'd spent a few hours on it but was one of this mermaid and she was swimming through coral and it's one of my favorite pieces that i made last year and i look back and there was not really anything like that that i did this year for mermaid um yet again that's down to time limitations and that's absolutely okay but if i could go back and change things and do things again i'd do more detail i'd do more backgrounds i'd challenge myself and push myself more than i could um but maybe there's going to be a month where i'm not as busy and maybe i can do a challenge then Is there any challenge months that you guys in particular absolutely love and there's a challenge that you would really like to see be done? I know there are tons of monthly art challenges that are out there, some small, some big, some very well known about, some not very well known about. Um, Is there any that you would like to see done? I know that 
you have like lots of different ones that are out there and would you like to see more it's it's kind of fascinating because these art challenges are there to push an artist and help them expand their boundaries um but they don't always help and that's why not everyone is able to participate and you shouldn't feel any pressure if you don't and i know i keep reiterating that but it's really really important um you don't want to take on too much and when you take on too much that's detrimental to your art and taking on too much and carrying too much on your plate you know balancing too much it's just it's a lot of pressure to put on yourself and it's okay not to do certain things um i in particular like really thrive off pressure and that sounds really stupid but i really find myself like find being really creative and uh, overwhelmed with ideas that when i take on a lot at once i feel a lot better for it um it's not a good way of approaching things and i know that i have limitations and i have to hold back sometimes but for some reason, when I have more pressure on myself, I tend to work harder. And I don't know whether or not that's because I'm used to like very tight deadlines or used to like having like those smaller time frames. I think I just work better at a shorter deadline than a longer deadline, really. I of course had to sneak a little bit of fan art in here. Uh, this is from an animation I've watched recently called Lou Over the Wall highly highly recommend it it is such a really heartwarming animation it's really cute and Lou is just absolutely adorable plus it has pug mermaids what more could you want and this was the final illustration that I did for mermaid I couldn't really think of what to do with a prompt scissors and just thought I'd have a little bit of fun with it imagine like these tiny little collector mermaids who are like kleptomaniacs and they collect all these little things off the ocean and this one's just like hey I wanted to make a really like, cute rainbow palette um, just because I was like, I want to use all the colours. <laughs> but no, I'm sad that Mermaid's ended. Um, I don't think I have it in me for another challenge month immediately after Mermaid. Um, but I'm still going to put in practice what I learned from this. And I really enjoy working with toned paper. Like, I should really use more toned paper in my videos. I hope you guys have enjoyed this sketchbook tour and if you wish to see more of my mermaid sketchbook tours I'll leave links down below to a playlist that you can see all my mermaid videos that I've ever made on this channel. I hope you guys have enjoyed my, my participation in Mermaid 2019. I hope you have a lovely day, keep drawing, have a lot of fun and as always stay creative.